Well guys, the free agency period is almost upon us, as players will begin signing fresh contracts beginning on July 13th. Now per usual, there's quite a few big names on the list of pending UFAs, giving us some interesting material to touch on. In this video, we'll be going over a select number of players that have yet to sign extensions with their current teams and therefore could be moving on here shortly. And with that, here are four pending free agents that could be on new teams this free agency. Ever since Toronto's season came to a close at the hands of the Tampa Bay Lightning, question marks began to surround Jack Campbell and his future in Leafland. Campbell, who not only outplayed Freddie Anderson, but also Peter Morozik, seemed to be one of the best value goalie contracts last season. Since Campbell was only making a backup salary for two seasons at $1.65 million on average, it probably wasn't foreseeable that he would be suiting up for 49 games last campaign. And really, all things considered, even though he had his moments, Campbell still produced Reduced decent numbers as he finished with a 0.914 save percentage and a 2.64 goals against average. Unfortunately for GM Kyle Dubas, it isn't going to be easy to keep the netminder as he has an obvious cap crunch on his hands. Campbell, who likely believes he's worth more, is probably aiming for at least $5 million a season for his new contract. Now, as I alluded to, the dilemma seems to be centered around the fact that yes, Campbell did have a strong season last campaign, but he didn't exactly finish in the Vesna conversation. Since Dubas knows fair and well that, that he has very little margin for error, he may not be willing to take such a chance. In a rather interesting article from The Athletic, which I'll link below, Jonas Siegel put Campbell in the second best category, meaning that his recent play compares him to goalies such as Sergei Wawrowski, Jeremy Swayman, and Cam Talbot. But not the top tier netminders that are solidified starters like Igor Shesterkin, Andre Vasilevsky, and Jacob Markstrom. According to Elliot Friedman, in a recent episode of his 32 Thoughts podcast, the insider reported that there haven't been any contract talks for months now, something that Campbell's agent corroborated. If Campbell is unable, Jermaine may believe Chicago and Buffalo seem to be open for business in net, Minnesota and Edmonton could also be potential suitors as well. Last trade deadline, we witnessed probably the biggest trade amongst all trades, the exchange that sent Claude Giroux down to Florida in exchange for multiple pieces. But it was almost directly after that that the Giroux-Ottawa connection began to surface. In a perfect world, at least as far as Giroux was concerned, the consensus seemed to be that after he won a cup with Florida, he was going to sign with his hometown team in Ottawa thereafter. Now, obviously the Panthers unfortunately fell short this postseason, but the question still remains, will Giroux return home and sign possibly his last NHL contract. What we do know considering the situation is that according to NHL insider Elliot Friedman, Giroux was already beginning to do his research and considering an Ottawa signing before the regular season ended. And it was around the same time that the Ottawa Sun released an article su suggesting that the Senators and Montreal Canadiens both have an interest in adding Giroux to their lineups. Thinking about it, both teams are relatively young and could benefit from an experienced vet who was a team captain for nearly a decade. Now, obviously, Ottawa makes the most sense from a sentimental standpoint for Giroux, and a practical one as well. Giroux's wife is a Kanata native, they naturally spend their summers in Ottawa, and he also owns a house in the vicinity. Even though Giroux has expressed a desire to try it again in Florida, there's one thing that may stand in the way of that happening, cap space. Something that Pierre Dorian and the Senators have a decent amount of at the present time. Since he's already made over $78 million in his career thus far, it's unknown if Giroux will be open to taking a hometown discount. Regardless, his predicament will be an interesting one to keep an eye on moving forward. For the New Jersey Devils, free agency couldn't come soon enough. Unfortunately, it's fair to say that P.K. Subban wasn't able to play up to his contract standards. After his departure from the Music City, his play never seemed to be the same. However, even though he may not be scoring the flashy goals today, Subban would still be able to provide physicality and leadership wherever he went. One team that's been consistently leaked to Subban is his home team, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Interestingly, according to an article I referenced below, NHL insider Pierre Lebrun indicated that Toronto 
actually tried to acquire the defenseman before he was traded to the Devils. Obviously, considering his recent production, any competent GM isn't going to intend on inserting Subban into the top defensive pairing. However, if he were to play a limited role, Subban could be beneficial to the team. Knowing how much the city of Montreal once embraced him, if he were to play in a bigger hockey market, again, the same type of reaction would probably take place. According to an article by Editor in Leaf, the author suggests that Subban would make more sense if he were signed to a shorter, cheaper contract, valued at around 3.5 million AAV for two seasons. Since he's already made over 78 million in NHL earnings, it's entirely plausible that he'd be open to a pay cut considering. Another one of the bigger moves last deadline was a trade that sent goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury from the Windy City to Minnesota. Fleury had proven to be a hot topic amongst NHL GMs, considering that he was a netminder with a tremendous amount of accolades that was stuck on a bottom-feeding team. Since Washington and Vegas both reportedly couldn't entice the flower, it turned out that his former teammate Billy Guerin had better luck doing so. However, after a rather controversial decision to start Fleury over Talbot last playoffs, many were skeptical as to how the Wild felt regarding the tandem. Garen recently commented to clear the air following the Wild's loss to St. Louis by saying, There's no controversy. There's no drama. We like both goalies. We like both people. We want them both back. And we think we can be successful with both of them, Garen says. However, even though there's definitely a desire to bring Flurry back into the fold, it will ultimately be his choice where he ends up. According to an article by The Athletic, by Wild reporter Michael Russo, one of the dark horse teams for the Flower to sign with could be the Montreal Canadiens. Reason being, with the uncertainty surrounding Carey Price and the goaltending position for that matter, Montreal may want to bring in a veteran like Fleury, who has a proven track record. Considering that Fleury is a Quebec native, and speaks French, this could greatly appeal to the leadership as we do know that Montreal enjoys having players who can interview in both languages. An article from the Montreal Gazette notes that if Price is put onto the LTIR, it would free up 10.5 million in cap space, which would be enough to recruit Fleury effectively. However, the article does note the obvious, that it would be a short-term fix and a gamble. But even still, it's a potential avenue for GM Kent Hughes to explore.